seven undefeated teams started the Class 1A state playoffs, and only Concord Triopia Co-op is here. Their opponent, the Rebels of Stark County, next. Championship weekend is here. 16 teams still have a shot at the ultimate goal of being crowned a state champion. And those 16 teams will clash right here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign over these next two days. And you'll see it all unfold right here on the IHSA Network. Welcome everyone, I'm Scott Lever, your field reporter for today's games. Settle in for what should be four terrific matchups. And it all starts in a matter of minutes with the Class 1A Championship game between Toulon, Stark County and Concord, Triopia. Triopia comes into this game a number one seed and undefeated. It's seeking its first state championship since 1975. Stark County is a number 10 seed that has rebounded nicely from a three game losing streak at the end of the regular season and has now hit its stride in the playoffs. Stark County is seeking its first state championship. Right now, let's send it upstairs to the guys who will bring you all the action of today's first game. Let's join Jim Spencer and Steve Mays. Gentlemen. All right, thank you, Scott, and uh, we launched this two-day feast of football, Steve, with the great contrast in styles, the running game of Concord, Triopia, Meridosia, and the passing attack, the spread offense of the Rebels of Stark County. Absolutely, Jim. It's a perfect day for either style today, and I think what we're going to see today is we're going to see some very young talent featured on this beautiful day here in November. It's an outstanding day. Both styles should work. Let's see who can make adjustments and uh, pick up a victory today, but it should be an outstanding day. Yeah, the weather today is, a, is about as perfect as it can be for a championship weekend, especially in consider, can it, considering some of the other we have had uh, over the past uh, nine years that we've been doing this. But uh, it's a great day. Temperature by the end of the day could be up around 50 degrees. That's right. We didn't have that the last few years, but today should be perfect if you're throwing the ball or running the football. And uh, we got a great contrast in styles. Look forward to this matchup today. Let's take a look at how these, uh, these two teams got into this uh, championship game there you see Triopia and an unbelievable quarterfinal win there for Triopia they were down 13 points with four minutes to go and came back to win came back and got it by one but uh, you, it's also you notice a uh, quite a few points scored on that board Jim yeah they run the ball effectively and uh, you look at Stark County they've had a interesting road to the final as well they scored a touchdown in the second round win against Orangeville with less than a minute to go to win that game last week rallied from 18 to nothing down to knock off undefeated Milledgeville on the road last That's week. That's right, number one ranked Milledgeville. That is a huge win for them. And coaching, talking to their coach pre-game, that was an outstanding win for his program. Yeah, no doubt about it. We'll talk about that more as the, the game goes on. Let's look at some of the key players we're going to feature in our 1A broadcast today. First of all, for the Trojans of Triopia, and there you see their all-everything guy, David Arndt, all-stater, and a, a great running back. That's right. Actually comes into this game with 1,700 yards rushing. He's a phenomenal athlete. You'll see him carry the ball 25, 30 times today, Jim, and he's a fantastic talent. And uh, on defense, the pass rush is going to be key today against the spread of Stark County, and they're going to rely on one of their great defensive ends to make that happen. And, and they really have to. They have 26 sacks coming between their two defensive ends. They've got to find a way to get pressure on the quarterback today, Jim. Yeah, Jacob Fricky will be one of those ends that uh, tries to get to Greg Dom, the quarterback for Stark County. Now, on the other side of things, for the Rebels of Stark County, uh, they go with a sophomore tight end. Yes, this kid is a sophomore, folks. 6'5", 240-pound sophomore receiver by the name of Calvin Lewis, and there you see him right there. You see his stats right there, but he does a lot of things for this team. He's the kicker, he's the punter, and when we were down on the field before the game, he is 6'5 and 240. He is a big young man. And then on defense for Stark County, not exactly a prototypical linebacker that you normally see, but uh, this kid is a, a smart defensive football player, and they rely on him to do some big things. That's right. Luke Turnbull comes into this game with over 100 tackles. Not very big, as you can see right there, 5'9", 160, but has a nose for the football, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have the key players. Now let's... Uh, see all the players. We're going to see the starting lineups of this Class 1A state championship game between the Rebels and the Trojans. Let's go to Memorial Stadium public address announcer Jeff Fritzen. Jacob Miller. And in number 
Johnson. Tight end defensive back. Another starting lineman, the right side of the offensive line, Steve Mays, is huge by Class 1A standards. Absolutely. Anytime you have, you know, two or three players over 270, you've got some size, and they are legit 270, Jim. We were down there pregame, and uh, they have some big kids. All right, today's coin flip and captain's meeting was brought to you by Walgreens. And Walgreens is a proud sponsor of the IHSA's Do What's Good Sportsmanship Campaign. There you see the pregame handshakes. And uh, that's the Do What's Right Good Sportsmanship Campaign sponsored by Walgreens. Some of the Rebel fans in attendance here on this gorgeous Friday, the day after Thanksgiving here at Memorial Stadium. And to kick it off for Triopia, there you see Jacob Millard, He's got it teed up and ready to go. And the Rebels and the Trojans just about set and ready to do battle for the Class 1A state championship here at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. 24 hours of football on the IHSA television network over the next two days. And is here is the kickoff. And it's going to sail deep and then into the end zone. And in high school football, that is an automatic touchback. So. Stark County and their powerful offense will start at the 20-yard line. And you see Rich Thompson, the head coach for Triopia. Triopia Meridogia. It's a co-op between Triopia and Meridogia Chambersburg that started a couple of years. Boy, he was fired up before the game was. And we got a chance to talk to Rich Thompson down on the field before the game. And his kids are very excited as you see Stark County lining up for their first down play. They huddle on the sideline before the first play of each drive and then come onto the field. And right from the spread, it's a bad snap to start the championship game. And Dom, the quarterback, has to dive on it back inside the 10-yard line. So a poor start. As you look at the, uh, we, we saw the starting offensive lineup and now uh, the graphic there, Eli Adams, Ligman, Birchtold, and Kelly up front the offensive line and then the backfield and receivers and obviously in the spread lots of receivers and big talented receivers uh, catching balls from Greg Dom here today. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit more but you're gonna see kids 6'5 catching the football and being able to run with it after they catch it. So after the 11 yard loss, it's gonna be an inside handoff and uh, gain out to about the 14-yard line. Here's the Triopia defensive line. They'll go with a 5-3 look, but they're going to, at times, bring extra defensive backs in, Steve, to uh, counter this spread offense. A pretty good crop of uh, linebackers there. And uh, the DBs, Wise, Kleinschmidt, and Phelps. Phelps also the quarterback for the Trojans. That's right. We have been told that you will see uh, Mark Williams, one of the outside linebackers, coming out, and they're going to put in Bradley Dinsmore, number 23, as an extra defensive back. So a big third and long here for Dom and company on the first drive of the game. He's going to roll out and fire the ball down the field. He's got Lewis on the far sideline. He was juggling the ball, and they're going to say that he was out of bounds. It would not have been enough for a first down anyway. So a three and out for Stark County, but this is no big deal. No. They, they were down 18 to nothing in five minutes last week at Milledgeville and came back and won. Yeah, when we were preparing for this game, it was amazing looking at some of the stats. Neither of these teams really should be here. I mean, when you look at it on paper, but they found a way to win and both teams are very excited to be here. 
on that play right there, on that third down play, Jim, you saw a nice hit by Brian Carragher, number 53. That's where they feel like they got to get pressure from those linebackers blitzing uh, Greg Dom. So a punting situation for Star County. And Lewis gets it away. Good field position upcoming for a triopia. The nice bounce on the kick. It's going to sail inside the 50-yard line to the 45. And it'll be downed right there. And that's a pretty good effort to get to Stark County out of a bad situation. Well, lucky bounce right there. We were down on the turf. The turf's in beautiful shape. University of Illinois has done a great job remodeling this facility. And the turf, both coaches mentioned, is perfect. So it, the footing should not be a, an issue or anything in this football game. Well, we saw the passing attack. Now we're going to see the wing T. A little double tight, double tight ends. Wing right here for Phelps, the quarterback. And it is going to be a fullback give, and we're going to see a lot of fullback give. It, that play right there is, you know, Steve, maybe the key to this offense. If you can't run the fullback, you can't run this offense. Well, exactly right. Right there, they're trying to trap with Clay Nordzik, who, you know, comes into this game with a little over 600 yards rushing. They always try early on, talking to Rich Thompson, to establish that fullback. We just saw the starting offensive lineup there for Triopia. Up front, Carragher, Millard, and Brockhaus, all three-year starters for the Trojans. Another wing T look out of a double tight end offense. And we're going to see Art for the first time today, the school's all-time leading rusher, and he dives inside of Rebel territory around the 49-yard line. So it's going to be third down and about uh, four yards to go. There you see the front line for Stark County, Paxson, Adams, Kelly, and Lewis. The linebacker is very active. Turnbull, not a big linebacker, uh, but uh, very active. And very smart, the quarterback of that defense and the, the defensive backs as well. Both quarterbacks play in the defensive backfield. Boy, you see that a lot, especially in the high school level. Third and four for the Trojans. Play action, Phelps firing the ball down the field. It's intercepted on the deflection. Tanner Ewing with the pick for the Rebels, and he can run. He's going to dive out across the 40 to the 43 in the first turnover of the game. Is recorded by the Rebels of Stark County off a deflected pass. Tanner Ewing with the pick. As Stark County comes back on the field, here are their keys to the game. Obviously, protect Dom. We talked about that uh, because the ends for Triopia, and they get to the quarterback a lot. Absolutely. They do need to create some mismatches. That's because they have those bigger receivers on those smaller defensive backs. they got to lo locate those. And then on defense, they've got to force three and outs with that very uh, tough offense for uh, Concord Triopia. So good field position here for the Rebels. Dom wants to throw, looking right, throwing right, and off the mark intended for Lewis. And it'll be second down and 10. The turnover for Triopia is their 19th of the year. And Triopia plus 23 in turnover differential this year. So they're normally on the other side uh, of the game when it comes to turnovers. Well, that kept them in the, a couple of the games during the playoffs. If you talk to their coach, Rich Thompson, they were able to create turno turnovers and stay in these football games. Here's a different look right here. Double twins by Stark County. Dom from the shotgun. And a penalty flag on the play, and we're going to Hear from our referee for the first time here in a moment, D. Wiley, as we'll check the marker. Looks like an illegal shift we're going to see here, Jim, by one of the wide receivers. Talking to the Triopia defensive captains. This is going to cost the Rebels five here. I would, or we're looking at uh, third and ten if they decline the penalty. You just saw D. Wiley there, penalty declined, and there's our crew out of the southern Illinois area, Harrisburg and Alvarado. And again, the, the referee, D. Wiley. Very much an honor for them as well. Absolutely, they these. earned their way here. Absolutely, they're graded all year, and uh, they've earned their stripes to get here. So third and long for the Rebels, trying to take advantage of the turnover. Dom steps up and fires, and he's got a man for a first down, making the catch, 81 Kai Paxson. And it is the first, first down of the game. There you see Greg Dom during the regular season. <laughs>
compared to what he's done in the postseason. Isn't that amazing? 907 yards passing in the postseason and 10 touchdowns last week against Milledgeville, over 300 yards passing. That's right. Look at that right-hand column. That's just in these four games that he's played in the playoffs. That other is nine games right there, Jim. That's amazing. He's really made a difference in this offense. One of the reasons they've come back from after losing their last three regular season games. And now we got a marker again. There was some motion up front. I think big Vern Adams, number 63, was a little anxious right there. Got a false start. Back him up five yards. All right, so that'll make it first and 15. There you get a look at the head coach for the, the Rebels. And in his fourth year at Stark County, Jade Nord. 31 and 14 records so far. His father, Galen, was a longtime head football coach. Never brought a team to the state championship game, though. First and 15 after the penalty. Dom fires down the field, and he's got Lewis. Big hit, but Lewis holds on. And that'll get most of the penalty yardage back. Actually, my mistake, that was 82 making the catch, and Andy Kieser making the catch on that one. Yep, Kieser, along with the other two wide receivers to his side, Jim, just ran stop routes, ran down seven yards, all turned around. Dom finds the open receiver. That's the thing you're going to see with them. You know, they're just going to find little seams. They don't try and throw vertically a whole lot. They're just going to try and find these seams with these quick and sometimes big receivers that they have. Dom has hit on his last two passes after misfiring on his first two. They stay with the spread and four receivers. Dom... Fires again, and he's got another first down pass and catch down to the 31-yard line. That was Calvin Lewis making the catch, and the big sophomore records a first down reception for the Rebels. Now you look at the temperature right now for our Class 1A game, at 32 degrees. It's going to get much warmer as the day moves on, and by the time we get to this afternoon, we'll have temperatures upwards of 50 degrees. So. It's a, it, it feels like July. Uh, great day. That's it's a right. great day compared to some of the weather we, ha we have had for championship weekend here at Memorial Stadium. So another first down, second on this drive for Stark County. Dom again and Markers again. You know what you can really notice about Stark County's offense? Look at the offensive line splits. They've got about six to eight feet. They're split apart as we'll listen to Well, on this drive alone, three of those types of penalties, but they've overcome them so far, Steve. But uh, those are nagging little penalties for any coach, they, as you very well know. They really are. But, uh, you know, look for Dom here again to put it in the air. He does have a back in the backfield, and they are trying to spread out uh, Triopia right now. All right, so Dom steps up and fires deep, looking for Tanner Ewing, the ball underthrown, and a penalty flag comes in. And it looks like they're going to get Tim Wise for pass interference. You know, you're going to see in the replay, Tim Wise is in good shape uh, right here on his defensive coverage. He just never turns his head. Look at that. He's got his arm up, everything. I think he would have gotten away with it if he could have been able to make a turn and look back towards the football. But he kept his head forward, as you see right there. What great camera action. And you see he did push him a little bit with the chest in the back. So, fans, if you're not a regular viewer of high school football, pass interference is not a spot foul. It is a 15-yard penalty in high school. There you see, uh, in relation to Champaign, where Stark County, uh, centered in Toulon, and uh, Triopia, centered in Concord, are not long trips for either team. Toulon just a little bit north of uh, Peoria, and uh, uh, Concord uh, in the Springfield area. So Dom on first down again, screens it out to Ewing this time, makes a man miss at the 15. He's got the 10, fumbled the Fumble. ball, and it came right back in his arms. Boy, I no, think it Triopia's did not. Got that yes, football. they do. Tim Wise, you know, makes up for that mistake he made right there on the pass coverage, was able to recover that football about the 11, 10 or 11 yard line, Jim. So uh, both teams have now turned it over. No score here in the Class 1A state title game. We'll have more on the IHSA television network in just a moment. Tonight's IHSA semifinal telecast is brought to you by the staff of Central DuPage Hospital. Always thinking, always caring. And by Country Financial. Real people, real answers, real quick. When it comes to planning for the future, 
trust country insurance and financial services to keep them moving in the right direction. With down-to-earth, straightforward advice, country insurance and financial services is always there to keep you on the right path. Country, real answers for real financial security. For your family, for you, for a lifetime. This is our country. When I joined the Illinois National Guard, I never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. The Guard opened the door for me. Now I'm on a career path, and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform, and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. that guy? We're Looking get, at this, uh, go ahead, Steve. Well, we're going to get a chance to look at the replay, and we're going to see the fumble is Tim Wise, number four. You're going to see his right arm come in here and strip that ball, and the ball is going to pop right up into him. He does stay in bounds. Triopia gets a huge turnover deep in their own end zone. So Triopia starts at its own 10 after the turnover, and a uh, uh, quick give to David Arndt. About four yards for the school's all-time leading rusher. Tell you, he's a good-looking kid. He's six-two, six-foot, two-oh-five. He's really put together. And uh, you know, once he gets in the open space, we watched a little bit on film. He's shown that he's got some wheels once he gets into the secondary. So Triopia offense, averaging over 310 yards per game rushing, and on the carry this time, Cody Kleinschmidt. Kleinschmidt, a sophomore, and uh, he is uh, wrapped up. Uh, it appears to be. Just a little bit uh, short of the first down. Here are the keys to the game for Triopia. Spread the wealth. What do we mean by that? Well, they have to do that. They've got three or four running backs with over four or 500 yards. You've got to, you've got to maintain and sustain two or three of your running backs and then sustain drives. They cannot get into a situation where they're three and out and giving this ball back to Stark County. And then the one that we think is the biggest key is mix up coverages. They're going to have to do things defensively to stop Stark County. Kellen Phelps on the quarterback sneak, and it looks like uh, he certainly does have the first down here. So Stark County with its, uh, correction, I'm sorry, Triopia with its first first down of the game. It comes at the 542 mark of the opening quarter. And he actually picked up uh, about four or five yards on that quarterback sneak, and that's a pretty darned effective quarterback sneak. Well, when you're running you know, behind Jacob Millard at 6'1", 261. That's the guy who you want to run behind, but to pick up four or five yards on a sneak, that's a nice play. Arndt with the cutback, positive yardage, out to about the 29-yard line. Arndt uh, has a, a good combination of speed and strength. That's what uh, uh, Coach Thompson really talked about uh, as the keys to his game. You know what I've noticed about their offensive line too, Jim? They run very well. You saw right there, they pull backside guard and tackle, get them out in front of Arndt as we get a good graphic right there of what we're looking at here in the trenches, both from Triopia's standpoint and Stark County's front four. On second down, it's a toss to the left side. On the carry, Bradley Dinsmore. Dinsmore, another sophomore running back for this Triopia offense, and he's close to first down yardage. Boy, he got a huge block right there from David Arndt. I don't know if we'll see this here in our replay, but watch number 25 at the top of your screen. I'll get a chance. He gets a block on Aaron Nunez, the linebackers. You see Arndt right there. Nice pickup. As you can see, Triopia is starting to establish something on the offensive ground right now. They've got a nice front five on their offensive line. Well, when you run the wing tee, you love third and one. And uh, that's what Triopia has right here. And uh, there was movement up front. Stark County moved initially. And then there was a reaction to that by Triopia. And we're going to have uh, the fourth penalty of this game. And the Rebels are going to be called for their third accepted penalty as they're offsides, and that will result in a Triopia first down. The ball will go out to the 38-yard line. This drive for Triopia started back at its own 10 after the fumble recovery. Wing right here, and it's going to be the fullback up the middle for Triopia. Bobby Shoot. Shoot will rotate with Kleinschmidt at that fullback position. And Bobby Shute 
one of the players that uh, is from Meridosia. Right, and he's one of those kids that we were talking about spreading the wealth to. Yeah. He ca he's a kid that comes in with 71 carries, 460 yards, five TDs. They've got three or four of those guys on this team, and they're going to have to continue to do that. Shoot rushed uh, for 81 yards last week in the semifinal victory over Salt Fork. Phelps is going to keep it. Off the left side, first down and more into Rebel territory. Look at the quarterback go inside the 25. And the senior quarterback, Kellen Phelps, with a big play. The first big offensive play of the game. It's a run of 32 yards for the Triopia quarterback. Let's go down to the field now. Scott Leber is standing by. Scott, take it away, buddy. All right, we're going to... Get back to the action here after that 32-yard run by Phelps. First down for Triopia inside the 25-yard line. Fullback give. Bobby shoot up the middle. He's got a first down as he dives down to the 9-yard line. Looks like it's going to be a first and goal for Triopia. Run of 15 yards for Bobby shoot. Well, that's that base play they like to run. Triopia, that little trap. They pull the backside guard, get up the field. And uh, Bobby Shute is having a real nice series here, as is Concord Triopia. The last two runs for Shute have resulted in 21 yards. Eight plays, 81 yards on the drive so far. They're nine yards away from the end zone. Why not give it to Bobby Shute again? He carries to the six. Well, he's running over the top right now of their left guard, Adam Brockhaus and Jacob Whited the uh, offensive tackle number 58, and they are really knocking people off the football. Now you see shoots numbers on the season. Out of the fullback position, averaging nearly six and a half yards per carry. That'll get it done. That'll help set this offense up. Second down, goal to go. Line of scrimmage just inside the Stark County seven yard line. Arndt's gonna get the carry. Arndt fighting forward around the two before he's brought down. It's going to be third and goal for Triopia. We'll get a replay of this run from David Arndt. And this is what to hit you with as well, a little misdirection right there as Arndt tries to get to the outside. Nice hit by Jeremy Morrissey, the outside linebacker for Stark County, number 83, really put a pop on Arndt. Big third and goal. There you see Kellen Phelps, who helped set up this drive with the 32-yard run. Double tights and double wings. Phelps is going to keep it, and the strong quarterback into the end zone for the touchdown. He bowled his way in from two yards out. Why not? With his long run to set up the drive, the quarterback, Kellen Phelps, on the sneak, takes it into the end zone 